Morning, folks. Um, welcome to um, the Wednesday Live. I'm half asleep. This is also half asleep. Uh, Tina is, probably. <laughs> um, been a while since we've been. It seems like ages since we did one. Um, plan this morning is to do the rest of this, which is the KX26. The KX26 old workshop. We're going to finish this off. We started it two weeks ago. Um, we've swapped sides as well. Instead of Ant and Deck, it's Deck and Ant today. Um, so Tina's going to do most of the build, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to do the build, but it's easier if Tina's that side because she can do, answer the comments and various other things. So hopefully you can hear us. Hopefully it's all um, working okay. We're going to crack on and see how we uh, we'll see what sort of a job we make of this of this building this morning. Um, yes, half asleep because we were out till late last night watching a film. Um, so I really could do with just going back to bed now instead. Um, but we're here to do this, so we're going to crack on. So KX26, um, rest of the build, roof and stuff, here we go. See you in a minute. Okay, hopefully you see my desk and hear me. I can hear myself as well, um, which is really unnerving. So we're going to do, for a start, we'll start with some simple stuff this morning while I get my brain into the right mode of building this thing so we're going to start with the base now so i'm jumping about in the instructions a little bit just so i can get my um head around what i'm doing this morning got the usual tools rocket car glue a knife supposedly a sharp knife but sharpish um mentioned this last week an empty ballpoint pen so we're using this uh, which is for scoring um it's just a biro big biro but any biro will do to make one of these just take the ink out sit and scribble for 10 minutes till the ink completely runs out and you've got yourself a scoring tool um i've got tweezers just in case i need them but probably won't and i've got some fine tipped thingies for the glue these are sms tip twos um but they, they fit laser cut kit glue which I'm not using today rocket car glue and all the other deluxe stuff so i'm gonna use that i'll just set that up ready Tip just pushes on. Hopefully the glue is still running. Or is it blocked again? It might be blocked again. Bear with me. That's better. That's unblocked. It's all in the preparation, which you can see I didn't do. Uh, I've got a pot jam jar with some wet tissue in it. That's to stop the glue blocking up. I'll show you how it works again in a minute. People ask every week, and it's really simple, and it works brilliantly. Uh, so first up, I've cut out... Well, Tina might have cut out last week, actually. The concrete base for this building, um, this is optional. You can glue this straight to your baseboard if you wanted to, but I'm going to glue it onto a piece of cardboard which comes with the kit just to give us a nice concrete base, oily, mucky thing. Um, so we're going to use Yoohoo. My personal preference, you can use whatever you want. PVA mm, might work, but I'm not overly keen on it because it makes the um, paper all sort of wrinkly and horrible um, so I tend to work with Yoohoo and I'm just going to give it a reasonable coating anyway hope everybody's all right um, seems like forever since we've done one of these and we have a break for a week but we have a, um, a meeting with a business advisor on a, on a Wednesday it's every other Wednesday so I have to kind of I can't rearrange it because if I rearrange it it looks like I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do um, so next week I'll have to try and get organised and get Dylan to do a live, um, unless Ian fancies doing one. Anyway, all well I've done, scribbled on the back. Oh, no, it should be sharp. Yeah, it was sharp, it was right yesterday. Maybe I broke the end off. Put another blade in then somewhere. Um, so I've scribbled all over the card with a Yoohoo, and I'm just smoothing that down. Swap it. I'm not worried about it being straight. As you can see, it's not straight. I'm not too worried about it because all I'm going to do is fold the sides over anyway. So this knife is blunt, I can tell you that. Um, but I'm just going to do it a bit like what sort of, I don't know. I used to wrap textbooks and things like that at school, I suppose. Same principle. I'm just going to trim the corners off a little bit. No particular scientific method to this at all other than just giving yourself a bit of a whatever you call it 
relief, I suppose, or something on the corners, just trimming the corners back. So when we fold them in, um, Lola's probably going to go berserk about half past ten because Kate's supposed to be coming in a bit late this morning. So when Kate get, gets into work, Lola will probably go nuts for the first five minutes. Um, so you'll have to just excuse her. Right, I'll use you who on these tabs as well because these are quite big tabs on here. What I will do is let the glue dry for just a second or two. A bit on the cutting mat now. Nice thing about you who is it goes sort of lumpy when you rub it so it sort of you can get it off your cutting mat quite easy right then let it go sticky for a minute or tacky and i'm just going to run my finger down this edge to give us a reasonably sharp edge to the concrete yeah on a single 45 degree cut looks what's it yeah true it does work all right, but for a base, it's fine. If you're wrapping something more particular than a base, then I would be more more accurate with my cutting and probably do a single 45 degree cut. But for the minute, for this, just for the base of the building, which will then be glued down to a baseboard, it's going to be fine. But good tip there, um, Ian. Thank you for that. Um, Right, I'm just going to fold this one down as well. So this doesn't doesn't take too long. If you let the yuhu go tacky, so it's not all completely wet and what's it? These glue down, lovely, and you don't get any seepage from the glue. I to let Tim do the talking, really, and I rather than me waffling. You you do way better talking than me. <laughs> You're concentrating. You got the fiddly bit cutting out the asbestos strips of the roof. You're the talker in this relationship. Yeah. Right. Um, okay, nearly that. Now, the reason why I'm jumping about in the instructions this morning, if anybody's building this at the same time as us, um, is I'm putting off building the eye beams until I've got my fingers all nimble what i didn't do is bring my blooming glasses upstairs no, i've left different. my glasses i've got glasses now um would you believe it um so i can actually see what i'm doing when i do the small stuff i've left them downstairs in the blue box um like a fool i'll need them for doing the eye beams yeah I'm, i've left the eye beams till later because they are a little bit fiddly um, they're optional you don't have to fit them there's printed eye beam detail on the inside of the roof on this build um, so you don't need to build the I-beams if you don't want to. Or you could just use plastruct or just strips of card or anything, just something to give you some roof detail to the trusses and stuff. Okay, base done. Really straightforward. That's that bit done. Put that to one side for later. And we can do a blue piece a bit in a while. So what we're going to do now is do the same thing with the roof components. Now, with these kits, compared to other die-cut card kits this is pre-cut comes laser cut with uh, base layers and everything the difference between this kit and our kits and other kits is that you've got to do the wrapping now the wrapping is a bit of a pain in the neck but there's a reason um same with other manufacturers like scale scenes or the all the other downloadable kit manufacturers you print well originally we sold this as a download and now we do it pre-printed but the benefit is when you put fit the wraps to the card you're covering all the cut card edges. So you're not gonna have any visible edges at all. There may be a little bit of visible paper occasionally, um, but compared to a big card edge, the kind of vis visible evidence of it being a card kit is very minimal. Um, so that's the, the benefit of doing this. Yes, it's a bit of a pain because there's a lot of work to do, a lot of extra work. If it was, if it was just die cut, you'd be built this in minutes. Um, but I prefer to go this way because hopefully when it's finished, you'll see what I mean with the difference in the standard of finish. Not there's anything wrong with card or the card kits. They're all good stuff, but there's just a little bit of a, a difference between a wrapped one. Same as working with brick papers. You can wrap bits of card with brick papers and you get the same effect, same principle. Um, so we're just doing the roof now. So what I'm going to do is do both pieces of roof, then we'll fold the tabs round. 
And Tina's legs it downstairs to get me glasses, I think. I decided just to bite the bullet. I went into boots and stood there for half an hour trying on various different pairs. And I found that some reading glasses would do the job because it's only when I'm reading stuff or trying to work close up on top, when I'm trying to work on close up things that my lazy eye has a bit of an effect on things and I can't see properly. It's not so much out of focus. I end up seeing double of things, which is a bit weird. People were taking the mickey, no problem. No, he was mad. He says, I can remember that. Wrapping school books with Annie Glipton. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember doing that, yeah. You'd pick any old wallpaper, wouldn't you? Or even worse, when you got given wallpaper at school to bring home. Yeah, to do that. I preferred brown paper, I think. Um, but it was usually wallpaper. Yeah, whatever your dad had just done the kitchen with. Yeah. Um, Andrew Finney says any straight cut touching the card corner will fold in perfectly, even if the angle is wonky. Yep. Because obviously you've got 180 degrees, so if you've got whatever, 40 degrees on one side and 50 on the other, it's going to add up in it. Um, or whatever, anyway, whatever. Uh, it's going to work. As long as you've got a straight line, normally. Mine wasn't straight, but it worked for what we need. Okay, so roof, same principle. On this one, we're wrapping three sides. Reason being, this bit here has got lots of dribbles on. So this is the dribbly bit that goes in the middle because the rainwater's run down this way on the asbestos. So we're gonna wrap the bottoms and the sides of these pieces. The top piece is gonna have another strip on which Tina's been cutting out separately at the moment or in the last few minutes. She's nearly done it, the look of it. But we won't need to fit the roof until we've got all the I-beams in. Like I say, that's the bit I'm putting off. When I did them originally, when I designed the kit, I thought, mm, they're uh, kind of one for the serious model rather than the average one that wants a quick building. Um, but we're going to try and do them today, see what, I, what kind of standard I can get them. Hopefully they'll be all right. So now I've got my glasses, I can probably see rather than just guessing whether they're straight. Okay, so folding the tabs around, exactly the same again, bit of Yoohoo on, let it go tacky for 10, 15, 20 seconds or whatever. As you can see, it just presses down. It's like working with double-sided sticky tape on Blue Peter. Um, and we fold the bottom up last. You could fold the tab, other tabs, you fold the bottom tab in, then fold the sides, it doesn't really matter, to be honest. In fact, I'll do one either way and then you can have a look there's a slight difference on the finish on the very on this one to the one we do the bottom tab last because you're going to see um the very edge of the bottom wrap so it's probably a good way to demonstrate it as you can see i'm making up or you can guess i'm making this up as i go along because i'm not following the instructions okay Let's fold that one round. So rather than scoring along the join, I'm just giving it a rub, rub with my fingertip just to give us a nice sharp edge on the card. In fact, the effect of seeing the card, the edge of the paper on the end of this is going to be very, very minimal because there's hardly anything there. There's not a lot of thickness to it. But I'll show you just because... I can because we've done it this way. Right. Okay. Nice sharp edge on that again. Fold these two over. Flying through now. Well, we seem to have a proper Cornish summer going on at the minute, anyway, at the moment. It's 16 degrees and cloudy down here now, which is reminiscent of how it's been on many holidays down here, isn't it, Tim? Mm -hmm. mm. Dry, it's not raining, but it's not exactly beach weather at the minute. So it's better just for cracking on and getting stuff done. Oh, 
not sure what the rest of the country's got at the minute, actually, mm. weather-wise, but it's about the same. Right. Okay, so I've done two different versions. This one we folded the bottom flap round first, and then folded the sides, and this one wrapped the sides round and then the bottom. Whether you can see that, there, that one you may just be able to see ever so, ever so faintly. There's a visible paper edge there, whereas on this one there isn't. You'll see it on that side, but the benefit is with this one, that's going to lie down on the building like so. And you're not really going to see that bit of white paper on the edge there, only very, very slightly. Whereas the other one you might do, so on the ends. So there we go, that's the roof, wrap that. Oh no, we haven't the finished the roof, we've got to do the inside of the roof, you fool. Right. Inside of the roof has these printed papers. Now, these don't really matter which way they go, as long as you match them up, because I don't know whether they're central. No, they're not central. You see there's a bit of offset there between the beams. Can you see that? Um, Tina's sat there chuckling to herself. Um, so we'll make sure we've got both on the right way. So we're going to go like that, and they're going to go on that way, which gives us a symmetrical roof. That's right, I think. Yeah. In fact, we'll do it that way because there's a very slight shadow on that side of the beam there. So we're going to do it that way. Uh, that, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you that. Tom Lowe used to use wallpaper inside out so that his books were all white. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. But Black Pox Alpha, it got told off for using page three to cover his maths book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> told off told off in public probably secretly um but it depends on if your teacher is well anyway no, i'm being sexist there probably but um no that's a good one yeah i was always jealous of things like kids that had star wars wallpaper on their books and stuff like that whereas mine was just plain wallpaper or plain stuff you used to get that sent as homework, didn't you? Cover your textbooks. Your homework mm. today is cover your textbook. Yeah. Or even worse when you had to do it with that um, clear, sticky stuff. Because if you made a pig's ear with that, you're in a mess. If you got sent home to cover a, a textbook with clear, what's it? Okay, um. so this one's going on in the middle, roughly. And I've just realised we've got to put it in the middle because these are slightly smaller. The reason being you have the inside of the building and the wall thickness so you want this perfectly in the middle or as middle-ish as you can get it so there we go yep david puncher uses pva or mod podge on wraps uh, he uses a wallpaper seam roller to take out air bubbles which works well i've not tried mod podge i keep seeing it and one of the wholesalers that we work with for cutting mats and stuff they stock mod podge and i must get some ordered uh, don't put the glue on there you fool put it on that bit um I must try some, see what it's like, actually. Never really. Uh, my sister used to bang on about Mod Podge. I have no idea what it does, but I think it's a... Is it PVA with an additive or something? And there's, There seems to be a load of them. When I've looked at Mod Podge's on the... What's it? Wholesaler's website. There seems to be about 20 different varieties, and I have no idea what the difference is. And I haven't really had a chance to sit and study what the differences are. Um, cheers, Tim, for the comment on the wrap. I need to get it redone as a texture sheet. In fact, I might might add that to my to-do list for next week because um, we're going back up to Leicester on Thursday next week. Yeah. Yeah, we're going back up to Leicester on Thursday next week for the bank holiday. So what I might do is get a texture done before we go if I can. If there's time, because it's about time I re-release this asbestos sheet texture. Just needs some rework done on it. But... I should better get it done relatively quickly if I can get some time at my desk. Right, there we go. We have our roof pieces done. Look, there we go. Roof, inside and outside. Dirty, dribbly stuff on the top. Clean on the inside. That's that bit. Okay, more wrapping. We've got more wrapping to do than Arid's at Christmas uh, or wherever, Amazon or wherever does wrapping. I don't shop at Harrods, by the way. It's just the first shop that came into my mind where you might better get wrapped stuff. Um, Now then, doors. Make sure we get the doors the right way because they are rectangles, not squares. So let's go that way. 
same principle with the doors. Can you see this all right? Making sure I'm working in the thingy. So just my usual Yoohoo technique, just scribble like a kid. Loads of stuff. Loads of Yoohoo on. Well, a thin layer all over, best you can. It works really well then. I'll do that one. And then I'll do this one quickly. There we go. Are you still cutting roof parts out? Yeah. Yeah, it's only because I've been oh, yeah. trying to read comments. They're quite complicated. They're the awkward angles, though, aren't they? I'm not telling you to hurry up, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I just wondered if, if you were still doing that, or well, there was something else we got that we hadn't cut out yet. Okay, so both these bits can be glued on here to create the doors. So the doors are just big, black, painted steel affairs. Um, bit of muck and grime and stuff, rust, whatever else on there. Bit of glue on there. So exactly the same principle as everything else. We're going to wrap sides in, then we're going to wrap the top in, or the main back of the door. So I'll pre-crease these a little bit only because they're small flaps on these doors or smaller than the roof and stuff. No, I'll just try one with you. John Welland? Yeah. One method that he uses for wrapping a lot of small parts is to use crack back paper, especially around window reveals. Crack back paper is basically paper with glue on one side and you remove the backing sheet to adhere to cardboard parts, thus no need to use Yoohoo to glue edges. The crack back mm -hmm. I use is for laser printers, however you can get paper for ink jets, in, ink jets too. I've never heard of that. No. I'd best have a look and see what that is, because I don't know what that is. Somebody's ringing me now. I have no idea who it is. Um, it'll stop in a minute. There, it comes up on my phone, that's all. And we're using my phone for one of the part of this, so it shows on the screen. Um, right. I need to remember to mute it next time. Okay. It's nearly done. First door. Start to take shape. Now the big flap. Uh, Nick Fort said he'd like a wood ship that texture. Uh, a wood ship, ship lap, lap texture. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. I will get one done. I thought you said, I thought we were going back to wrapping of um, textbooks. I thought you said a wood chip. Oh, right. A wood chip wrap. I thought, oh, I'm not doing wood chip paper. No chance. You remember that wood wood chip, I mean, wallpaper. It was always a pain in the neck to get off when you wanted to strip the wallpaper. Okay, we have a wrapped door. And then we're going to do the same again. This one, just like wrapping presents or anything else, really straightforward. Glue on each tab. I keep putting the glue on the Yoohoo because it all just runs out all over the bench otherwise. We end up in a mess. Well, something I was going to ask was, mm -hmm. has anybody got any tips for cleaning off um, cutting mats? That's oh, just yeah. in, isn't the uh, tidiest of modellers. No, there are lots of that wasn't me. <laughs> Actually, um, so when you're trying to cut paper out, it's mm, uh, it's sticky that one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. The other one on your desk around there is perfectly clean, mm. but that's not. Well, you have built kits on it actually, because you, yeah. yeah, you built the three eighty LX three eighty four, Dylan's line side hut or something, didn't mm. you? Or waiting room thing. All right. Nearly done the doors. Then we're going to do the sign, the front wall pieces, and we'll maybe do 
the bench in the cupboard, maybe. Don't know. Probably, yeah, probably, because it's easy to fit those before we put the roof on. Um, okay, so that was it. That's that one. Two doors done. Inside of the doors is slightly cleaner, slightly, than the outside of the doors, which has got green algae at the bottom. Look. Uh, so that's those. That done. Now we need to do the front of the front tops of the walls because these are going to give us sort of overhanging nice looking 3d bits of uh, uh, asbestos at the front any tips coming in yeah johnson hall says use um hot soap and water with a cloth um gets most of the muck off tim says use a cheap paint stripper on a damp sponge, but don't leave it on or you'll lose your markings. Oh, yeah, true. Thinners might get it off, maybe. Yeah. They're quite, um, that one's quite caked up, actually, mm. isn't it? Right, what I've done now is I'm gluing the piece of card into the centre of this thing for the roof, for the front of the roof, yeah. or the eaves. Tim models on glass. And then you just need a sharp mm. razor to get stuff off. True. True. True, true, true. Maybe you ought to get a piece of um, safety glass. Safety glass from the top of this table. Oh, yeah, just cover the whole table. Yeah. Mm. Not a bad idea. Simon, uh, Simon Cox says, um, keep your cutting mat only for cutting and then put a sheet of paper on it for painting and gluing. Yeah, good one. Mm -hmm. You have to be organised with stuff like that. Yeah, you? you have to remember to do stuff. It's the remembering bit that chokes me up. Jake Forks said he found that knocking over a bottle of EMS plastic weld cement cleaned his black mat so well that it took off the green covering. <laughs> <laughs> Liquid poly is not recommended either because it takes the uh, markings off. Ah, uh, right. <laughs> okay, so the front of these we need to now wrap the bottom. I'm going to use Deluxe Rocket Car Glue for this bottom bit because it's quite a small flap there and I need a glue that's going to behave less stringily. Is that a word? Um, then blooming you who so just a bit of rocket on that one right put in the pot that's the idea with the pot with the thing glue upside down in the wet tissue stops the tip blocking i'm not using the standard rocket tip the flexible one that comes with it um because i'm kind of falling out of love with those because they just block up really easily um and i keep chopping them off and by the time you built one kit you've gone from a tip that's that long to that long because they block up while using them so um, nothing wrong with the glue. The glue's amazing. Tips are just a bit of a nuisance. Um, these tips are easier to clean, and if you do the upside down pot thing, you don't lose a lot of glue into the wet tissue. You lose a bit, but nothing to worry about, sort of thing. Not enough of a quantity to be able to count the pennies on the, or whatever, pennies are worth of glue you're losing. Um, but it just keeps the glue nice and flowing. So. Okay, bottom of that one done. Try and get it nice and sharp so it looks like a half decent realistic edge. There. That's that one. Bit of glue on the tabs on the ends here. Just to cover the very ends of this. These roof pieces, that's that one done. Small pot of MEK, whatever that is. MEK. Oh, Mech. I've heard of Mech. Uh, Mech. I've heard of well, Mech Pack. I can't remember what it's to do with. Um, I've heard the name from somewhere. Spilt on your cutting mat also cleans it well. Oh. There's quite a few people, well, uh, there's quite a lot of people that have um, found out what's good and what's not by oh, um, accidentally doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I suppose. You learn from your mistakes, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Right, there we go. We've got the fronts wrapped and the front and back wrapped. 
that. Excuse me. Okay, this bit can be glued on now because we don't need to do any of the roof stuff before we do this. So we'll glue this on. I'm going to use rocket car glue for this just because I want it to go off quickly and I don't want to, loo to uh, have any glue seepage anywhere because that would look really stupid. I want to keep the building finished nice and... I say clean, I mean clean of glue, not clean of weathering and muck because it's a filthy <laughs> building. Okay, so that glues onto this slightly cleaner area that's marked on the front of the building. At the top. Now, if you want to see a really good version of this building, if you have a look uh, where, well, in the Railway Modelers Club, there's a, or railwaymodelers.com, Tim's posted some really good pictures of this, which I think we mentioned last week, where he's used a dry ice thing, smoke machine. Um, with this kit and a car up on a ramp or something and it looks really really good but you can fit small single decker buses and stuff like that in it in it uh cars could be anything could be blacksmiths there's a number of signs that come with it actually i was trying to decide yesterday which sign to use i've gone with morris motors not morris as in the car company just morris just the name morris morris's motors but you get a number of signs, blacksmith, uh, there's a, don't know, where are they gone? What we've got, we've got agricultural and animal feeds or something, which is a nod to me, one of my granddads, um, El Kucha, his middle name was Kucha. Uh, we've got Nichols and Son Heavy Haulage, which it worked well for. We've got J Hill, which is J H Hill blacksmith, nod to my other granddad, who got me into all this in the first place because he worked on the railways. He was not, wasn't a blacksmith, it doesn't do that, it's just a random thing. We've got a glass factory and scrap metal merchant, so it could be anything. So there's lots of signs that come with this, and you can do whatever it is you wish. Um, I'm going to wrap the sign as well now, and then I'm going to do the tool bench, or the bench and the tool chest. And then we have to brave the subject, which is the I-beams. Now, Tim, did you put I-beams in yours? I can't remember. I get you pro guess you probably did. There we go. That's Kate, I guess. That's slowly saying hello. Excuse the, excuse the dog. Wait, Lola is Kate. Wait. Animals crazy. Sorry about that. <laughs> she's realised that. Now she's excited. Right, Lola, you'll do. Thank you. Stop now. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll just have the last word. Uh, Sean's asked whether we can slow the subtitles down as the speed you were talking. They're disappearing quickly. Sorry. Oh, I didn't realise. Okay. I forgot. There's subtitles. Yeah, subtitles are automatically generated, aren't they? I forgot that because they come up with some really weird things. I'll have to slow down and speak slower. Sorry. I don't okay. know who's taking the mic into that. Probably is. As it's Sean Mason. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I say nothing, then there's no, what's it? Um, loads of people saying morning to you, Lola. Now you've had your say. Okay, the sign is put, built exactly the same way as everything else. It's wrapped, same thing. Um, I'm just using a cardboard centre, which is part of the kit. And I've wrapped it, folded the tabs down, and then we've got a nice sign. Weathered, mucky, grubby old sign to go on the front of the building, which I think I might glue on now, actually. Then we can get it nice and straight without the roof being in the way. So if we put it somewhere there-ish. It's going to look pretty good. Um, Tim said yes, he did. He swapped out the uh, he swapped it out for plastic strut H beams because oh, yeah. he wanted to drop chains. Oh yeah, it's probably the easiest option. The thing is, because this was a download originally, and it's kind of wanted to I want to supply it to people as a complete kit. It comes with the ability to make your own I beams, but they are what's the word? A bit of a faff. I'll admit that. 
so they are optional. Okay, so we've got a sign there above the doors. Quite smart. Quite pleased with that. Um, so we'll do the tool cupboard. The bit I didn't glue on, uh, cut out on there some doors. Could you cut the doors out for me? It's not the. Uh, can you see which ones they are? Oh, it's the top ones, the two separate ones, please. Right, these are made up of a million and one cardboard centers, which we've got to glue into a thing, into a block. So I'm going to use SXO2, the small one will do. I'm going to put, this is just a, a right angled jig. I'm going to put some glue on there. I'm just going to stack these up. I've counted the right amount so I need that I need to do the thingy. Um, it's also Kate's birthday tom tomorrow. No. Yeah, Kate's birthday tomorrow. So. <laughs> wow! <laughs> <laughs> we'll put a few decorations up downstairs for her. <laughs> uh, she's not in tomorrow, she's got a day off tomorrow, so we'll put a few decorations up today. Uh, she's uh, she's also very, very tired as well because she's been up all night because of various things, family things, so she's um, rather tired. She's fueled by probably an awful lot of caffeine this morning, I imagine. <laughs> She'll be bouncing around like ticker for a few hours, and then late later on, she'll just go, ah, <laughs> fall asleep. Right. So just literally stacking these up and pushing them into the corner of the SXO2, trying not to get glue everywhere so it doesn't glue itself to the, uh, the jig. Bit repetitive this but as i say it's because it's based on the downloadable kit and in the downloads we just design it to glue onto one thickness of card which is usually 0.7 mil ish you can build it with serial packets you can build it with all sorts or you can buy a card of course so there we go that's the bits for the thingy, which we've got most of, I think. Um, Tim says he still wrapped the H beams that he used, the plastic ones, in mm. the um, what's it? Right. Oh wrapped. right. Yeah. Photo sheet. Mm. Did you leave the invoice on Kate's desk? Yeah. Yeah. Right. You should bring something else. I think it doesn't sound like invoices. I just suddenly thought. Okay, so this is going to be wrapped on three sides. The reason why we're only wrapping three, one, two, three, four sides, we're not wrapping the back of this or the bottom is because it's just going to stick up against the wall. So I'll use a bit of rocket on this one. I've cut the wrap out for the tool cupboard. Now this tool cupboard is actually a photograph of my dad's tool cupboard in his garage. Dad, if you're watching this, that's your cupboard. I bet you don't know I did that, did you? I photographed it one day when we were around your house. Um, I thought I said at the time, but I might not have done. But this is your tool cupboard, Dad, in a kit. Um, if you're watching, and we're going to wrap the three sides, three sides like that, which gives us just about enough to cover all of the cupboard. Yeah, pretty much. Sorry, not holding it under the camera, but under, under my face. Um, you can't see what I'm doing then. So I've done that, glued that into the centre of the unprinted side of the wrap. And we're just going to glue these side tabs down now. Not too much glue because I don't want to go everywhere. But you need enough on laser cut card to... What's the word? It's kind of like surface tension on the glue. The, the very fine soot on here sometimes repels the blooming rocket car glue. So you need enough to just soak the, the soot. I nearly put my glue in the water then. That wouldn't be a good idea, would it? Right, there we go. We have a tool cupboard, or the makings of a tool cupboard. Now we need these bits from my good lady wife here. 
And what I need to do now is score these roughly down the middle. In fact, I'll score them on the other side so I can see what I'm doing. It's so, all right. So I'm just using empty ballpoint pen, ruler roughly along the middle ish. I'm just going to score as best I can down the centers of these so that when we fold them over, it creates a set of doors for us. Yeah, they do. Okay, so we fold that over. A little tiny bit of rocket here. Same with this one. Get my folding as accurate as I can. In fact, I'm going to put my glasses on. Uh -huh. Glasses. See, proof. I have glasses. I might not show you what I look like in them, but you can give proof I've got glasses. Everything becomes massive when I put these on. No problem is now I can't read the comments. I can't I look over to the screen there. I can't open the comments. I can't see a thing. Um, okay. Now that one's wobbled a bit, so I'm just going to trim this very edge off here. A little bit of white I don't want showing. Okay. Now, the plan here is to try... This is slightly fiddly again, but it's doable. So I'm going to glue that along that edge there using a bit of rocket. I just need it to sit on there so we've got the appearance of a cupboard door. Now the cupboard goes that way and the door goes, handle goes that way, so it needs to be like that. All right. So a little bit of rocket down this edge here. Good thing about rocket is it's a bit like super glue for card and paper, so you don't need a lot and it usually grips really easily. So I'm just going to position these so they're sort of partly open. Like that. And then we'll do one down here. How are we doing for time? No idea what the time is. 10.42. Oh, we're doing too bad. We've got blooming eye beams to do. I thought we'd be done in under an hour today, but we won't. Eye beams are going to be 10, 15 minutes, perhaps. See how we get on. Okay, so the other door's going on now. Same principle. I'm going to leave that one open at a slightly different angle, just because. See much clearer in my glasses. There we go. So we've got a random door openings on the doodah on the tool cupboard. I'm going to put that to one side now so it can set. Then we're going to do this one, which is the tool bench or the workbench. Same principle. Get the first two nice and square, the rest will follow. Yeah. And once these are done, we can glue these into the building, and we can glue the tool board in place. I've cut a little tool board out. Which is there just printed it's going to be stuck on the wall there's also some as was mentioned earlier page three calendar type things as well whether we want any of those on or we're not doing those today we're not doing those. I don't know. There's some health and safety signs and a few other things but they can we can perhaps well I don't know 
might have a can you cut one of the health and safety signs out please mm -hmm. we best keep it family friendly there are some page three style pictures as was featured in many garages throughout the 60s 70s 80s no doubt 90s probably Pirelli calendar style things but just grab a what was it health and safety sign and maybe some other warning sign of some sort okay that's the core for the bench done so the principle with this again is we glue that onto the back of there which is the tool side that's the tool side so i want to make sure we're right at the front there just in case we need to trim any off we we'll need to trim a little bit at the back, a little tiny bit. Okay. Could do with an extra millimetre of thickness on this, but I'm not sure. I think I've misplaced two parts. So for the minute, this will do. I'm just going to work with what we've got. Okay, fold the front down, which is the bit with the tools on. There. And then fold the sides. I'll do the back first, then fold the sides and then trim, I think. Or shall we do it that way? to just trim that piece there and that piece there and I'll carefully trim off about a millimetre off that bit and the same off this one That's better. bench apart from trimming that one bit off along the bottom there which I'll let dry for a minute it's got a basic bench really straightforward just a simple wooden top a few tools underneath there just literally wrapped in paper just like the rest of it um, I'm going to try and trim this bottom bit off here just going through with lots of cuts to try and get through without tearing anything so there we go that's better done right now we can position these inside the building can you see that there i'm just going to glue that now so that's the bench going in this is easier to do before you get the roof on and everything else and before you glue it to the base as well that make sure that's in where i want it yep okay we'll add the tool cupboard should we put the tool cupboard towards the front there yeah we'll go with that okay tool cupboard the doors have glued nicely on this now so they're quite sturdy so tool cupboard goes in around about there like that and then we're going to put the tool board
Jeff's asked if there's any news on the first class membership plans. Who? Jeff. Jeff. Uh, yeah, Elizabeth, I, I could show you. I'll, send, I'll post a photograph uh, shortly in the club. Elizabeth's been packing them. There's piles around there. They're all pretty much ready to go on. She's got a lot of them done now, hasn't she? Yeah. Um, so they're pretty much ready now. We're waiting for, the, to be quite honest, we're waiting for Royal Mail to add a new service to our, our account so that we can get the blooming things posted out. And I've just realised that's probably a bit high, that tool board there, actually. I can ease that off. Just go a little bit lower. A bit more glue. See, we do make mistakes quite often. Just going to make put the tool board a little bit lower down the wall, that's all, because it might be a bit difficult to reach there. So, Mr. Morris, there we go. That's that tool board's in. Okay. Yeah, uh, club packs all are pretty much done. Um, Elizabeth, well, Elizabeth won't post them out because she's going up to Leicester before we do. Um, but we are on the case. We'll be starting to dispatch them as soon as Royal Mail email us to say the service has been added for shipping them. Um, we can get cracking and get them out. Right, these are the flipping eye beams. Uh, <laughs> they're not that bad, really. They're just a bit, bit uh, fiddly. I'm going to glue this to the back of that so we get a nice rusty double-sided thing for that this one we've got to score down the middle fold in half and it gives us the longer beam longer bits for this one now you get more than you need to do the eye beams on this so if you make a mistake there's more bits you can sort of cut off and use uh, to try up two or three attempts but they're not they're not too bad really i'm probably making them sound worse than they are they're just a bit fiddly so we're going to score down the middle of there, this one, and pre-fold it like so. Then we need Yoohoo. We've got to make sure we've got plenty of Yoohoo on. goes all the way to the edge of the paper on one side. And then while these dry, Tina's cut us some little signs. Oh, she's cut us a... Yeah, well, poster out. Hopefully, it won't offend them. No, but... it's a, it's just it's a picture of a lady, but not to. What's it want? Right, fold that in half. I'm going to set that to one side to dry, while we put the posters in, in a minute. So that's that. That's step one of the long guy beam. And then the other one. These are the shorter ones that go side to side on the building the glue has gone a bit funny Brown said you could extend the outside of the door to, to cover the side, which would make it easier to attach. Yeah, could do. Yeah, good idea. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. He used to call it you who snot. <laughs> it kind of is. It's a bit like you who snot, isn't it? Yeah, true. Um, I'm just going to look at the instructions now for the I beams. Okay, so we've got a longer one and shorter one. Right, okay, I'm working out why. I'm trying to remember what I have to do here because we cut them. Okay, it's a long, 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 long time since I built this. 
So we do two that cut to fit there, and then there's some that fit up inside the roof. So there's two that fit up inside the roof either side. So we need four there. We need one all the way down the middle, and then the other ones we do two to go across there, which you cut from that piece. Right, here goes. I know we're doing signs first, so we'll let that dry for a minute. Uh, we're going to put the health and safety sign, so we'll do the health and safety sign over here. So we're going to put it up on this clean patch of wall here somewhere. A little blob of rocket. And try and pick it up. Just Dean just sits here chuckling, you know, while we're doing this. That's all I can hear is you chuckling. There's a few people that are only here for the uh, I beam. Uh, probably. <laughs> <laughs> They've either built it and thought, God, that was a nightmare. I'm going to watch him make a complete fool of himself and probably cut the end of my fingers off again. Chris Bush has said the excitement's mounting now. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not that. Getting giddy. <laughs> right, fire hand, you cheeky buggers. Cheeky buggers. <laughs> you see, I've left it till last. They should they want to eat the frog, they say, don't they? Just do what you do the bit you're not looking forward to first. Right, so we've got a health and safety poster, we've got a fire exit sign. Um, what's that one say? You can probably read that better than I can. Uh, CCTV, so that can go outside. We're going to put a CCTV sign up the top there, I think. Do you think? Yeah, up here somewhere. So, CCTV. <laughs> yeah, cheeky buggers. That's it. The premises guarded by CTC or monitored by CCTV. That's that. And then we have a picture of a lady which can go somewhere over here, perhaps. Uh, in terms of the electric wall sockets kit and the roof light kit and the engineer's toolkits are all excellent additions for this kit. They would be, but that's very true. It would be good to actually put some of that stuff in. Um, might try and retrofit some, maybe not next week, week after perhaps. We should still be able to get in there with the roof on. So, right, there we go. Picture, are you chucking again? <laughs> right, you've got a picture of a young lady, uh, a tool board, tool cupboard, and a bench, and a sign on the front. Right, that's that done. Here Rachel we go. Harris has said that you just tried to build tension by putting the posters in first. And suddenly Cox is saying, waiting for the, and that's all we have time for. To take <laughs> yeah. And the I think we'll have to wait for two weeks. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm going to do it. I'm going to stick with it today. I'm going to stick with it. We're going to see how we get on. <laughs> Whether I'll build, no, I'll build all of them. I'll see how we get on. Let's, let's see how we go. Right, I'm working with a really sharp knife now. And I've got the wrong ruler, so I better have the safety rule as well. So don't take, take the ends of my fingers off <laughs> at the same time. Okay. The bit you've all been waiting for, which is going to be so boring, it's unbelievable. It's like watching paint dry. All right, just need to cut these into thin strips. The position for cutting are marked by the white arrows. So that makes it a little bit easier. Whether to make everybody sit and watch me build all these eye beams, I don't know, but I'll show you the principle of them anyway. It sounds like they're having a crash or something next door. Mm. Loads of kids now at the gym. Maybe they got a kids' gym session or something. Who knows? So 
awful quiet now, isn't it? I'm concentrating really hard on it and not cutting my fingers or making a complete pig's ear of cutting these out, you know. The idea being that once these are done, you've got some nice blue painted rusty looking beams that will sit lovely in the top of the building. Uh, Gordon said about an employer's liability board. Yeah. I don't know, to be honest. Probably not. Um, and then Andrew said from the 60s there would have been a factory act board on the wall by law. All oh, right. Yeah, the difficult thing is finding the blooming things, mm -hmm. finding graphics or copies of them to scan, photograph, whatever. All right, this is the bit you've all been waiting for, and it's going to be such an anticlimax, it's unbelievable. Uh, right, first one, bits are done. Three pieces, because now he's made of three pieces. Right, there. Now we just have to make it. The idea with this is a piece of, or a very fine bead of glue down, down the middle of there. Again, Rocket is your best friend with this. You couldn't do this with PVA at all. Yeah, drum roll from Tina. Ian's asked for it. <laughs> <laughs> the idea here is we glue this. Now, if I can get hold of the blinking thing. Come here. At right angles. Like I say, you couldn't do this with PVA. You'd just be there forever trying to get it to work. Rocket is your friend on this one. That's given us a a T. T piece. Right, that's one. Well, the start of one. That's that one. Uh, the other ones we need to do some to go side to side on the building now. So we'll do the same again. I've got to cut these to length when they're done. Um, not that, because that's a scrap. That's just an off cut. Same again. In fact, let's try it this way now. Again, it's like a long, 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 long time. I think I built this in 2015 when I first when we first designed this. So it's a long time since I built this. I'm just going to try doing it this way. Put the glue on here. And not really all over my fingers. It works better this way. Definitely tweezer work, and no, the answer is it's not easy doing it that way. It's easier doing it so that you glue it. You apply the glue to the strip on your mat first. That one's a bit of a... Worked, but it's not great. Two parts done. So we need three of these long ones, don't we? I can't make everybody sit through me building these for the next hour. We'll get 
three done and in position. And then the ones up inside the roof, I think we'll, I'll do them at my leisure, I think. Otherwise, in fact, we might have to build some, build a couple of shorter ones because they glue up inside the roof actually. Look at that. See, it wasn't worth the wait really, was it? It's not the most exciting of things. It's the most boring part of kit building. But I think it's worth the effort once they're done. three parts done so I'm going to run glue along the center of this now top couldn't do this without my glasses Turn the T into an I. So with this part of the build, plastruct is probably your friend, to be honest. Because this is a bit of a fiddle. There. Yeah. We have an I beam. But plastruct would probably be a much simpler <laughs> and quicker solution. But that's an I beam. We have one. Um, let's do another. delicate but yeah. another one make me sweat a bit these actually quite hard it's the gurning that they can't see <laughs> <You're cheeky boy. laughs> am i i probably am i'm not intentional you, you always do and you're concentrating on stuff <laughs> <laughs> you cheeky sod Now I'm really, really conscious. Nobody can see me apart from you. Tim asked whether Kate's having an office chair race downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just the drawers, isn't it? <laughs> we should do that. That'd be a good one. We should have an office chair race. probably on a mission just if she's not really slept and she's fueled by a lot of caffeine she's probably on the right mission this morning to <laughs> crack on and get everything done don't it dave says so she could have done those last night if you hadn't gone out <laughs> very true dave <laughs> just very very true yeah i know so there we go that's that's building i beams so we've got three 
Um, what I'm going to do now is put one in the center of the roof. And what we'll probably do then is I'll leave you all to go and get it, go about your daily stuff. And I'll finish these off. I'll put the roof on anyway, and I can glue the others in afterwards. Rather than sit and have you watch me and Tina taking the mickey out of me going in while I do this, I'll do it in my, I'll say, spare time, you know what I mean? So once the I-beams are done, look, see, they're worth the effort because then they fit. They just slot in and they look really, really, really good. Um, it just slots into the roof. I'll secure it with a little tiny bit of rocket, both all ends, both ends, and on all sides, just so it sits lovely in there. So we'll do that one. There we go, that's that in. Then we'll glue the roof on because we can put the beams in afterwards anyway. The other beams will match up with here, look. So what I'll do is I'll cut beams to fit these bits. In fact, if I measure that from there to there and make a note of it, the other beams want to be roughly 52 mil. So if I make them 52 millimeters, um, not while everybody's watching because it's just so we'll be here all day um i can glue them in afterwards so i'll put the roof on now then we can put the flashing and stuff or whatever it's called I suppose it, yeah it's flashing put the flashing on the roof cover all the joints but like i say that's what the eye beams look like see they're worth the effort because they look really good you just need patience to make them. Um, but otherwise, <laughs> plaster up by beam about two mil, two mil I beam, job done. Okay, roof on, position it so it overlaps equally both sides and along the guttering so that if the rain ran off, well, when the rain runs off, it lands in the guttering. So position it. So it's nice and central. Mucky bit in the middle. Okay. Don't forget, don't don't put it that way. I just was wrong. Just wrong. Don't put it that way. Please don't. It goes that way. Mucky muck stuff. Rain always runs that way. So not really point in gluing the roof along this bit because it just sits flat anyway. So just need to glue the ends. Make sure I've got plenty of glue on to hold it. And that one goes on there. Like so. Okay, flashing. Did that one want scoring? Uh I can't they're scored. Where's the other one? There's another one for there. Oh. I thought, oh god, don't tell me I've only got four or uh, three in the kit, and there's supposed to be four. <laughs> Well, the idea with the flashing is this just sits on the edges. Up in there. Just to give you the impression of a finished... What's it? So we can do that with Rocket. So, yeah, the long one, not scoring, please, if you can. I'm just going to glue these along the edge here, along the front edge. If I pinch it very slightly, it sits nicely in there, just like a proper shaped piece of asbestos flashing. Try and get it equal so it's the same all the way along the length of the flashing. There we are. Don't matter. It's all right. You can fold it along the length if you want. Excuse me. And 
we'll glue the doors on. We'll put it to the flashing, then we'll put the doors on, and then I'll, I'll do the my beams later in the week or something and finish it off. But you saw how they were built. We've got others there that are ready to go, so they're ready to cut and put across. But I can't put those in until I've glued the ones up up inside the roof. But it would be torture to sit and watch me build. However many more we need, six or so. There's a couple of people that said it's quite uh, therapeutic. Is it? Watching you do it. Yeah. It's not for me. <laughs> Far from it. Far from it. Okay, there we go. The flashing's going on. Look, that just neatens the edge of the building off. Looks lovely now. Well, lovely. As lovely as a grotty old thing garage can be. Let's do the back ones. So I'm doing just pre-folding these along the back, just so that they are easier to fit. So they've just been scored on the front using the empty ballpoint pen to make it simple to fold and it doesn't affect the print on the sheets. And then we'll be done really. And I will post pictures later on, like I say, of the rest of the beams. One last piece of flashing. It's disconcerting not to read those comments at all. Can't read any of them. There was quite a bit of talk of food earlier. Food? Yeah. I'm starving. Alright. I'm really hungry. <laughs> and porridge didn't last long this morning. Um, Alan Whitmore says that's some good reading glasses you've got there. <laughs> Uh, the other one, I can't read the comments, but the computer that's got the comments on is six foot away, and I can read brilliantly in front of me. So here, I can read that. I can't. I can't mm. read the. I can't read the text on the back of the glue without my glasses on. Mm. No, I, I could just about make it out with the glasses. And I can read it really well. But from a point of view of reading from six foot away, no, everything's blurry. Then, oops. <laughs> It's like we've gone back to food. Oh, <laughs> stop. I think it was Ian Bennett that said about the drum roll, and Tim said he'd prefer a bacon roll. Oh, yeah. Or fig roll. Oh, oh I could eat fig rolls. Oh, no, bacon roll. Fig rolls are the best biscuits. <laughs> okay. Flashing, flashing, flashing. Lots of flashing. Not that sort. Um... Oops, gone the wrong way. Oh, sausage sandwich. Sausage sandwich. Oh, stop. Please <laughs> stop. What have we got? A boiled egg downstairs, yeah, haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> A hard boiled egg for 11s. A cup of tea and a hard boiled egg. Last bit of flashing, then we'll glue the doors on and I'll let you all go. Thank you ever so much for watching as well. Thank you for um, it means a lot, it does, that you're willing to sit and watch me painfully build beams. Um, but no, I enjoy doing these actually, it's nice to show people what goes on with or what goes into building a kit. <laughs> what now? <laughs> Tim said it's got to be a pasty pod. Yeah. Um, oh, we've got full English from Tom. Oh, stop. Um, sausage sandwich from Jonathan. Um, Basil says cheeseburger. Jonathan says egg and bacon sandwich. Uh, Andrew says toasted sausage sandwich. Any of that lot will do. Any of it. Miss Terry as well. Terry came before we started today. So that won't be happening. And Tom's shut up the road because you've got a holiday. Oh, I've got this in the wrong place about five times now. Right, about there. There, that's better. Martin's just gloating. He's saying he's had a full English. He's just had. 
goodness me. Celtic Pope says you'll have to go back through the comments and read them. I will. It's quite funny. I will. I will. <laughs> right, there we go. All the flashing's done. Five lots of flashing. Put the doors on now, and then we're going to go disappear. I'm going to get some food. I don't know what. Well, it will be an egg. It'll be a hard-boiled egg. Do we want the handle foldy door on that side or that side? I don't know. That way. Simon Cox says he's especially enjoying this week, this week's Schadenfreude episode. <laughs> What's that mean? I forgot what it means now. I've heard of it. I've heard it, but I forgot what it means. Right, what I need to do as well on this now, I've just realised, is I need to trim the very bottom of the door off. Just Andrew a little bit. Andrew cat likes porridge. Uh, maybe just animals should eat porridge, because I get bored. It's boring. Right, I'm not going to glue this down to the base for the building yet, because I want to finish off doing the interior. Just trimming these doors off, there's a little extra clearance where they're going to be open. Okay, glue down by the hinges. Do the same with the side. Just realised if I've done that one, yeah, that's the wrong way around. You complete full. Right, missed twice, cut once, as Dylan keeps saying. Glue it on the right way, you complete full. So what I've done now is glued that the wrong way around so that the green of the, on the moss and stuff, and algae is on the wrong side. So that's what we need to do. So just glue those like that, hold them for a couple of minutes. Should start to take in a second. So I'll probably put that down now, like that. Just running a bit of glue up the joint between the door and the main wall. And the same that side. <laughs> Doubting Dave says, anyone local to scale model scenery watching, can you pop round with some bacon? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, that'd be nice, but there you go. Right, we have doors in position. I'm going to leave those without touching the building now. I'm going to let them set. You can see that. So we've got doors done. We put a beam in. We've made three more or two more I-beams, got some more to do, which I'll do without you guys watching after I've been fed. Um, and then that's pretty much the building done though. I've just got to glue those ones up inside. They just need trim into length. You've got two that go side to side, that way, like that. And then they're going to keep falling off, aren't they? And then we've got shorter ones, which I need to glue up in there, which we said, what, 52 mil? So they'll glue up inside over each of the concrete pillars. I'll post plenty of pictures of this on Facebook, Railway Models Group, whatever. And I'll show you, next time we do a live, I'll show you the finished model once it's 100% complete. Uh, but that is it, really. That is the principle of building the KX26 um, thingy. Uh, quick question then. Yes. Andrew Hicks asked if there's any, um, door, any other door options for this kit, sliders or bifolds. Uh, not in the kit, but you could fit sliding doors 
the uh, LX3 something, whatever we do, you could fit those sliding doors. There must be a set that fits. If there isn't, I'll make some. Um, yeah, at the moment, this, but this, these these are kind of customizable because they're just solid doors. You can, you can glue them shut, open, solid, whatever. You can play around with them, really. These are, they're done like this because the building it was modelled on up in Huggerscope had doors like this. These are photographs of the actual doors. Mm. It was up by the dance place Elizabeth mm. went to. So the doors are done like this, but they these were were bifold doors, I think, or they had the ability to bifold. Um, you, as in, they fold back double folds. Um, you could do a concertina door, all sorts. In fact, there's just we have um, an AX pack. I can't remember. It's industrial detailing pack has got some sliding doors on it. Uh, Jonathan Hall's just said that he's used a sliding door from us. Yeah, that's, it's um, I can't remember what the kit number is. AX one something. Um, anyway, that's it. That's the build. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. Um, base, that's the only thing we haven't put on, but that can go underneath there at some point, like that. And it can fit onto a larger thingy, larger concrete area. Yes. A note to finish on. Yep. Whiskey, double cream and brown sugar makes porridge taste better. I imagine it probably does, actually. <laughs> yeah, not sure it'd be that good for me in the long run, but there you go. It would be nice, I suppose. Oh, that's better. Take my glasses off. We can see now. See the rest of the world. Right. Thank you ever so much for watching, everybody. Um, I hope you enjoyed the kit. That's KX26. Not sure what we're doing next time. I'll get Dylan to do something next week. I'll find something and dig something out for him to have a go with. Um, yeah, have a good one. Thank you very much, everybody. We're off. See you later. Ta-da. Bye. Bye.